foreign investors, Michael Joseph saying, certainly interested in the Kenyan markets and uh, not too perturbed by the potential bickering that, uh, that goes on. In that context, we've had uh, Prime Minister Raila Odinga confident about a Eurobond launch uh, amidst a still uncertain global picture. What have you made of that news? Well, I, I mean, the news was interesting because of the numbers involved in the news, where, where all the media was reporting that uh, Prime Minister Dinga was talking about a $10 billion issue. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, $10 billion is humongous. You know, <laughs> it's 33% of GDP. It is uh, multiples of the fiscal deficit in, in Kenya. I, I'm sure that there must have been an error in, in the number, and that, in fact, he was probably referring to something like $1 billion. If we, if we rewind to when the original talk came out of, of the international issue, mm -hmm. um, the initial talk was something like 250 to 400 million dollars right and it's sort of gradually grown as as a financing requirement in the, for the fiscus has, has grown mm -hmm. so a number of one billion dollars I mean um, one billion dollars would equate something like 75 billion shilling the fiscal deficit in Kenya is something like 170 billion yeah. shilling that would would put make it a lot more sense you know mm -hmm. so so I th I'm sure that that is the context now in terms of, of the international environment well you know we have seen a number of emerging market currencies make pretty successful uh, bond issues. Um, Senegal, I believe, is about to go yeah. to market. Uh, but even just over the last year, we've seen a number of countries making good. And the South African example mm -hmm. is, is a great one. So I think, you know, if it's marketed properly, it, it may very well succeed. You know, I, I think uh, Kenya is a country that's been on the radar for a lot of people. But outside of the equity space, it's been very difficult to get involved yeah. in Kenya. And this just opens up the door. Well, certainly, uh, Ewart, <coughs> it's the bond market locally that has been uh, diverting a lot of the attention when it comes to local investors away from the equity scene uh, to the fixed income market. Uh, what are you making of the movement we're seeing at the NSC at the moment where many have been saying it's pretty much been driven by foreign investor interest? Uh, yeah, good morning, Alicia. Good morning, Leon. Um, you're, you're quite right. I mean, it, it has been foreign investor interest for the longest time. But, you know, as we approach Christmas, that really the, the makeup of the investor uh, space is actually changing. What we're seeing right now as we, we approach Christmas is m many retail investors coming in, you know, selling to get, you know, the extra odd shilling for Christmas. And what we're having is local institutions on, on, the, on the buy side coming in. So, uh, you know, realignment of portfolios and, dare I say, propping up the share price of some of the stocks they're in, such that, you know, as of 31 December, it looks good uh, on their portfolios. They've, they've had a hard time this year, some of the uh, the local institutions, you know, are trying to justify tr trustees of their respective pension schemes as to why they're in certain stocks. And in some, time, some instances, they've taken quite a beating. Just taking a look at some of the stocks that have been gaining, uh, attracting your attention, Ewart, where would you be playing right now uh, as a local investor, as an institutional investor, where, as we've been saying, the bond market has been proving uh, to be a little bit more of an attractive force? Well, yeah, the bond market has proven to be a, a, a huge uh, attractive force. I mean, if I can just sort of uh, comment on what Leon said, you know, we're approaching, uh, you know, what I call perhaps, you know, a tipping point. And I think this happened in Nigeria a few years ago. If the bond market goes uh, where it should be going, it will be an attractive space for foreigners. I mean, bear in mind that the foreigners have always been interested in the equity space, have found it very difficult to get into the bond market space. And, you know, with it going live with us, having the ATS in the bond market, it, I think it's, it's going to be, we will see an explosion in the debt side but you know with regard specifically your to, uh, to your question as to where we you know where would would you put your money in as far as the equity space is concerned I think some of the banking stocks are looking fairly uh, interesting and the cement sector as well I mean there are two things we need to bear in mind when looking at, at Kenya especially with regards to the next year 2010 number one is is, is this referendum I, I believe at uh, the new constitution that is if if it goes to the referendum and I think there's a huge chance that it could be voted through that will send a very good signal into the economy number two is the international uh, criminal court, you know, with this whole uh, Ocampo thing that we're talking about, should any person who was involved in the post-election violence be indicted, I think that will send another strong uh, signal into the economy, and that will be optimistic signals for the economy. I think that could uh, uh, could take things off. Uh, sorry, I'm sort of going on a bit here, but the, the rains haven't been terribly good uh, this year. The you know the predicted rains. Uh, that may be, you know, a counterweight to the uh, optimism, but I tend to think the banking stocks and the cement stocks would be, you know, decent forays into the equity space right now. Seeing that you've uh, d just uh, 
put our, uh, the spotlight on the banking arena here. I mean, we know that the interest in the mar bond market has, uh, has been uh, given uh, attention by both government and corporates. They've been rushing to the secondary market to actually uh, raise funds to support their own growth moving forward. Let's take a look at the role banks need to start playing in this regard in terms of easing back on lending uh, in order to stimulate economic growth and therefore uh, divert attention back into the equity space. Um, yes, you know, it's, it's not every company that can go out there and, and raise money. You know, a few of the big listed companies can do that. But the smaller companies still have to go to the banks, and the banks really uh, must lend to them. But I think what I find of, uh, of, of concern to me, really, is the fact that the, the Treasury yields sometimes are pretty high on the infrastructure bond. You know, the, it was, I believe, 12 percent or so, 12, 14 percent if you uh, include, you know, the, the tax element. And that's... If you're going to get that on treasuries, then surely banks will be lending at higher rates. So that perhaps may preclude banks from actually going out and being as, aggr as aggressive as they should. So, you know, it's a bit of, you know, six of one and half a dozen of yeah. the other, really. Well, certainly it has been a contentious issue, Leon, the fact that we haven't seen a Kenyan banks lowering their interest rates in tandem with uh, the central bank itself. I mean, what are you making of that uh, entire situation? Because it is such a necessity in order to stimulate economic growth once again. It is. But, but you know, the issue that we're talking about is, is in, in Kenya, I mean, for a start, I mean, it, it's not about where the central bank rate is because the central bank rate has got very little influence at this stage on where interbank market rates are. Um, just simply because of the nature of, of the policy framework. The issue about the bid offer spread is a pan-African issue, right? It, you, you can go to practically any country across the continent and you're going to find exactly the same issue. It's got to do with the cost of doing business at the end of the day. Yeah. Now, I mean, I'm not here to try and defend what, what banks do or don't do, but what we do know is when you look at any survey, doing business in Africa is expensive. You've got logistical issues, you've got you know, infrastructure issues, and it adds to the cost, and that is why you have these wide spreads. The more the, the, the countries focus on making it cheaper to do business, the more likely we'll be able to see a compression in yeah. those spreads.